Google Gemini Code Assist just got some huge updates that have happened inside of August. In the previous video I covered it, but already it has been upgraded with multiple versions till then and I want to test it out again. So this is Gemini Code Assist. It's an extension inside of Visual Studio Code and similar editors. So pretty much any editor that is built on top of VS Code has this plugin which you can install and use completely for free. So what you have to do inside of Visual Studio Code is go to extensions and type Gemini Code Assist, just write correctly. And then what you want to do is actually log in with your Google account. If you already have this extension, make sure to restart it after updating it, super important to do so. So it gets all of the new updates that have happened recently. So what we have to do today is test it out once again. There are a lot of new features that have come along. So they have improved the quality of suggestions and answers. Uh, so it gets a better understanding of your code base than previously. Also, it gets suggestions from the documentation stored in Markdown files. So they improve the context actually of Gemini while you use the code assist. So that's important. A lot of improvements have happened as well in the past. And in general, there are a lot of other features about IntelliJ Code Assist. So this is also on IntelliJ ID. You can actually also view quick previews of the changes that are going to happen. And in general, it has improved across multiple dimensions. So let's give it a very quick try, a very quick check. I really love how they've also integrated IntelliJ. I actually use it on my job to write Python code and it's an amazing ID. And also it has agentic mode right now on Visual Studio Code, which is what I want to use today. So we're going to create three prompts that we have tested out in the past. I'm going to go with a Pokedex Pokemon webpage, a Flappy Bird game, and an application about transformer models. If you want to learn more about AI coding, I have a very cheap introductionary course for beginners hosted on Udemy. It's a flat one-time fee of only $20. So if you're interested, click on the link down below in the description. You can buy the course. Over 40 hours of tutorials and material are in there. And every single month I push new upgrades, hours upon hours of tutorials to further improve this amazing course. And you get all of that completely for free. You just pay once. It's the cheapest and best offer in the market right now. If you're looking to learn AI tools and how to use them in your day-to-day -day life. So let's go ahead and begin with the web page. I want to create the web page as a first beginning. So I'm going to click agent mode on. You can add tools like MCP or, uh, you know, specific tools that are inside your own computer that you have specifically created for your use cases. You can also have a Gemini.md file that allows you to provide instructions and context for your product projects. I will do a dedicated video on how to create this kind of file, how to take advantage of this with multiple agents, not just Gemini, in the future. So make sure to subscribe to not miss out on it. So I'm going to give it this content, this, uh, you know, this prompt. I'm going to keep it very, very general because I want to see how the model performs. Really beautiful graphics. Actually, I gotta say the UI experience of Gemini Coast has improved quite a lot and they're keep improving it. Like guys, in my opinion, Google is coming for everyone. They're absolutely going to replace every AI wrapper, every AI ID and company that builds AI and they're going to have distribution as well as the base model and the compute across the whole line. Google is accelerating. You should be starting to use AI tools created by Google, even if they're not the best right now in a lot of cases. You know, you got to test them out. You go to check them out. Like it's, it's absolutely super important that you do so. Like, I really cannot stress enough how important it is to catch up with Google models and Google workflows. So this is the web page that was created. Nothing super incredible. It's a very short, very quick page. And maybe this, you know, a mode needs another prompt that says to it, go ahead and improve the web page. More and better style, add more content. So we are going to ask Gemini AI agent to improve this. We need a better, a more beautiful website. And this is something that I want to start adding inside these videos. Not only showing you one shot prompts, but also recurrently asking the model to improve specific asks, 
aspects of what it has created already. So we have code generation and now we have code editing, improving again and again upon the initial prompts and the initial results. And I want to do this as general as possible, meaning I don't want to do prompt optimization. This is something that we should not do in the future. In the next six months, the models should completely optimize the prompts. They should completely extract 100% of their performance without people needing to have insider knowledge. So this is the page, this is the mobile view, and I want to open it up on a very different page meaning I want to open it up as an actual website because right now we see it in a very restricted format, which I really don't like. I want to see the full view as a website. So this is the website. It has like this banner. This is a teaching mode, a completely different idea of how to build websites because this is about teaching. So I would say this result looks fine. I'm not super happy with it, but again, it's a free model with a very vague, very general, general request. So I find this acceptable. Let's go ahead and create a Flappy Bird game at this point. So I'm going to remove everything here. Just press the delete button and open up a new chat. You can do this here with a new chat option. And I'm going to ask you to create a Flappy Bird game in a single HTML file. And as always, make the game simple. Most AI tools make this game super, super hard. It's literally unplayable by a human that doesn't have killer instincts. So hopefully, Gemini, in this case, will be able to provide us with a great answer. And if I'm not mistaken, Gemini Code Assist is completely free for about a thousand requests per day. It's like Gemini CLI, you can couple these two and get so many free requests in a single day. It's like, it's game changer, guys, in all honesty. So this is the game. I'm not going to open it up in a new tab. This is more than enough. And let's click the start button. So the game, Indeed, is not super hard, but again, it's not perfect. So I'm going to ask the model, improve the following. Let's see if it can actually improve the game. One, more nice UI, more nice bird pipe styles, improve, make the game easier. So we're going to ask it to do three things. Very simple things, very simple edits. Let's see if the model can actually take multiple steps to improve the final result. Again, I don't want to judge this model very harshly because the agent mode is on preview and all of this thing is completely free with thousands of daily requests. So this is a completely free service that we don't expect it to be the top notch in the market. Actually, these things, I actually think that this model is using a very simple model from Google, not Gemini 2.5 Pro. This is probably flash maybe flash light. So I don't expect it to be state of the art. But imagine this tool with all of the data they have gathered, implementing Gemini 3 into training with all of these different stuff and opportunities that arise with it. How much better, how much more powerful it's going to be than what we see right now. I think Gemini 3 is going to be so well integrated inside all of these things that Google is making that I think it's going to be a game changer completely, honestly. Just want to say that. I want to refresh the page. And so what it says is I have updated the game with request improvements. The UI is more appealing. The bird and the pipes can be restyled. The gameplay is easier. Well, let's see it in action. So this is the game. Oh my God. Oh no, oh no. This is so, so bad. What has happened? This is like a memory leak. What is what is even the, the issue at this point? So it tries to load some kind of API fonts. No idea what the issue is. Really, really have no idea what the issue is. Super strange issue. I really don't know even at which point the issue arises. So this is repeat. Oh my God, this probably is super bad for performance. I'm just going to straight up, you know, well, you know, maybe, maybe it's fine, but I mean, this looks strange. So if I click quick fix, what is it going to do? Let's see. So the base URL is wrong. Interesting. So it doesn't close the URL bracket, which is super strange. This is a very strange mistake from AI. I really don't know why that has happened or if I should have changed it, but let's open up the browser. Let's open up in a new page. And oh my God, this is absolutely fucking bad. Oh no, it completely, completely lost everything here. Super strange. This was something so unexpected. So let's try out something else. This was a disappointing result. But the job here, you know, you're not going to see anything insane in the title. 
you're going to see probably new AI updates. But this was disappointing. In all honesty, this was not good at all from Google. I expected something a lot better because in the past it was able to create everything quite correctly. I don't really know if they have mer if they have nerfed or what went wrong, maybe this version is not stable, but that was disappointing. I expected something better. Let's see how it can do with a Pokemon Pokedex website. It's thinking, it has thinking mode, it uses tools and it does improvements on top of what it has created already. I really want to see if it's going to be able to do exactly what it should do. At least in terms of the planning steps, it seems very, very solid. Very, very solid, in all honesty. It's very, very solid because it does the correct steps it's needed to do. It's thinking agentically. Even though this model is not optimized to work agentically from training, still it does a very good job as an agent in general. So let's see if it's going to be able to give us the response we needed to give us. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a check. Hopefully it's going to work perfectly fine. Hopefully it's not going to disappoint us because this is actually solved by a very small Quen model without anything agentic. So I expect this model to perform well here. I expect this plugin, this tool to do a very good job with the response that we are waiting for. If it messes it up, then that's going to be a huge issue for Google. Because again, Quen 3, the small one model with 4 billion active parameters, was able to do tremendously well on this specific use case, as well as the Flappy Bear game, as well as all of the others. So, this is the final touch from Google. They should not mess this out. I really like how the model works. I really love the documentation it produces, but it feels like it's overthinking at this point. Like, it takes so much time. Hopefully, the model that was triggered by all of this is Gemini 2.5 Pro because it's thinking so much. I don't expect any other model than Gemini 2.5 to have completed these requests. And I expect a perfect, perfect result. But let's see. I really find it so insane that the model is still thinking. It probably has crashed or something like that. I really don't know. But let's check out the response. Let's open it up here and this is the Pokemon Pokedex. So it loads asynchronously and it works as expected. It has everything, it has it animated, it looks fine, but I would say it lacks a lot of information that I expected the model to have. Like this is not perfect by any mile. So I think, you know, the free version, fine, it's good. If you want something free that you can use the whole day, that's great, but it needs so much work on top of it. You know, it's going to make things work, but you have to go step by step and you've got to be very specific if you want it to work well. Otherwise, what I see right now is pretty disappointing, at least with the agent mode. You can close it off, open up a new chat, try without agent mode, maybe it works better. But I find it quite disappointing right now with the agent mode. I think it's, you know, it's not well optimized, in my opinion. So for now, I would say if you want something for free that you can do loads of requests, simple stuff, that's fine. Otherwise, don't use it.